you next. Christina Crawford is here. Christina Crawford is uh, Joan Crawford's daughter and is uh, the author of a book about which millions of people, literally millions of people are talking. It's titled Mommy Dearest and it is an unflattering portrait of one of America's most beloved, popular uh, movie stars, your mother, Joan, um, who was given to really erratic and rather antisocial behavior in behind closed doors, away from the public. Let me just try and characterize uh, what, I'm, what I sense from the book. She really, w she could become a very violent person. She slapped you often. She made you eat the uh, raw portions of the meat that was served, and as a child, you just hated it. You would eat the burnt ends around the edge and leave the red pieces on the plate because it literally made you gag. That's right. When you failed to eat that meat, she put it in the refrigerator and forced you to eat it the following morning for breakfast. That's right. When you didn't eat it the following morning, what happened? It was put back in the refrigerator and I got it for lunch. And then dinner. And then breakfast again. The following day? Yes. Um, you peeled, uh, you peeled absent-mindedly as a five-year-old, or maybe you were seven, the wallpaper off your bedroom wall in a certain area, and then you panicked when you realized what you had done and tried to paste it back, only succeeding in getting fingerprints and making it worse. Terrible mess, yes. As a result of that uh, indiscretion, you were, she did what? She uh, went to my closet, and I had a favorite yellow dress, and she took a pair of scissors, and she cut it to shreds, and then told me I had to wear it for a week. And if anybody asked me why I was in this condition, I was to tell them I didn't like pretty things. Uh, so you were forced to actually meet uh, outsiders wearing this tattered... Oh, yes. Was yes. your underwear was visible, too, was yes, it Yes, it was. Uh, later in... Uh, <coughs> your mother had a very unhappy childhood. I, I guess... I'm as curious about your mother as I am about her relationship with you and about you. Uh, let me just offer some observations here, uh, Ms. Crawford. One is, this book, uh, this book is a desperate, seems to be, a, I don't say desperate, say a terribly emotional cry from you, almost begging your mother to love you. The book is written through the eyes of a child growing up. It's not written as an adult looking back. So that what happens, I think, is that the reader experiences, I hope the reader experiences what I experienced as a child. And uh, yes, I spent most of my life trying to make sure that my mother loved me. Uh, she, there were night raids in which she dragged you out of bed by your hair. That's right. She dragged you into, clo into your closet. And, and began screaming as you were just waking up. I guess you probably thought you were in the middle of a nightmare. I did, yes. And she was screaming because there were wire hangers in your closet. Yes, my mother had very strict rules. Uh, we sort of lived uh, in a regimented fashion as though uh, we were in the army, I think. Everything had a prescribed time to be done and there were rules for everything, everything in its place, so to speak. Mm -hmm. If there was a minor infraction of those rules, uh, particularly if she had been drinking and particularly if it was late at night, Something took hold of her, I don't know, her own terror, her own fear, and she would focus on those minor infractions and punish me brutally sometimes because of it. Um, I don't pretend to be the first person that's asked you this question, uh, Ms. Crawford, but your mother was such a, had such a desperate need. I guess in this, uh, the word is appropriate when, uh, with this point, I think you'll agree. Your mother had a desperate need to present to the public as the classiest, the most beautiful, the youngest, the most intelligent, the most vibrant star in Hollywood, and all of those close to her, her family, her, her, how many husbands, three? Well, actually four. Four husbands. This is our family, and aren't we wonderful? And you better smile when Photoplay took your picture if you knew what was good for you. That's right. So here was this enormous need for love and, and uh, esteem. This book would just kill her if she was alive. Well, that's probably true, because you see what happened was that the, the face of herself, the image of herself that she presented to the public, was so very different than the way we lived privately that uh, many people didn't know who this person was. It was as though there were almost two different people. Mm -hmm. So that, uh, you're right, I was a public person from the time I was a child, and that public image of me was a fantasy as well. Yeah. Um. Who or what, I, I hope you don't, I don't want this to sound like an angry question because I have to say I was, in, I was very absorbed by this book. And I, I believe everything in the book. 
I mean, I am not for a moment questioning the truthfulness. In fact, your candor is very painful in this book. Who is served by this book? I tell you quite frankly, I think the book is uh, much more universal than just a story about my mother and myself, our relationship set in the background of Hollywood. From what I have understood from traveling around the country as my husband and I have been doing now, this book touches many people's lives. People have said to me, if you change the names and the extraordinary setting, you've written my story and I never thought anybody would understand. I never thought that there was anybody out there that I could share this with. I thought this was my own private nightmare that I had to keep a secret. And that's exactly how I felt all my life. I tried to tell the truth, nobody would believe me. I tried to get help, nobody would help me. Mm. Th this has been good for you then, hasn't it, emotionally? Is this cathartic? A lot of people have asked that question. I think that if the book itself had been written as a catharsis, I couldn't have written it. I couldn't have dealt with everything about my life in that compressed period of time if it hadn't been for the fact that I had been trying to deal with my life in some positive fashion for many, many years. Is that uh, visual ready, Ron? You were the only member of the family who agreed to, to view your mother's body prior to cremation. When she was dead, yes, that's right. Uh, in fact, you make the ironic point that the funeral director seemed to be rather pleased that somebody was going to see the wonderful work he did with the body. That's correct. So, in this awkward way that so many millions of us have, <coughs> have had to sleepwalk through this nightmare of dealing with the funeral director and uh, the cosmetics and the after and the embalming and all, and isn't she wonderful and doesn't she look nice and all those inane things that people say at wakes, you said, yes, I'll go. And you went to the basement of the funeral home and your mother was lying on a table. Yes. You describe her as looking very frail. She was. Very thin, but somehow attractive even in death. Oh, well, her face was still her face, yes. And here's what you said to yourself as you looked at your mother's uh, body. I know you're not really here with me anymore, Mother. I know your soul is gone already. I just want to tell you that I love you, that I forgive you. You know I forgave you long ago. We had so much pain together, you and I, but now, Mother, God has set us both free. God has set you free to begin another journey. I pray the next one has less anguish. God has set us free, Mommy dearest. Go in peace. Goodbye, Mother. Goodbye. And I love you. Now, following that very poignant mental or silent prayer that you offered for your mother, it wasn't long after that that you discovered that she left you purposely and with a final slap in the face out of her will. It was one of the great ironies of my life, yes. Irony would not be the word I would use. Now, this doesn't make me right, okay. but uh, you had to be angered by that. I was shocked. I you was weren't absolutely angry? shocked. Not initially, no, because um, at first it was very difficult for me to understand. I don't think that anybody who has ever been through anything like that can possibly uh, uh, say that you really understand what's going on inside mm -hmm. of yourself. There are emotions tumbling over one another so fast that mm -hmm. it's very difficult to sort them out. But I really believed that my mother and I had come to peace with each other, and uh, it was quite obvious by that that at least one of us had not. Okay, what's the line in the will? I I'm not going to be able to find it. You must know it by heart. I think it's for reasons which are best known to them or well known to them. I, in other words, your mother said in the will, I, I leave nothing to my daughter Christina. Yes. Or to my... Uh, to Christopher, my brother. For reasons which are best known to them. Well known to them. Well known to them. Yes. And you had to say, why? You wanted to know, okay, let's assume the worst. You don't, you're, you don't want to put me in your will. Why do you have to make this parting shot? I didn't understand that, and I still don't understand that. And uh, the will is being contested in the state of New York. My brother and I are contesting it, so that uh, I'm not really at liberty to say a great deal about it because uh, we will have to go right. to trial. You also, you also stand there incredulous as you, as you read this document, which had been written about a year prior to her death. That's right. So it was written at a time when you thought you had some reconciliation with your mother. That's right. And you, you, you speculate in your book that here is your mother in death, reaching out of the grave and slapping you one more time. That's right. That's right. It, was, uh, it was very disturbing, very upsetting, and uh, particularly because I felt that, as I say in the book, 
that if it were simple disinheritance, uh, there was another way to go about it. I felt that my, uh, uh, my reputation, my life uh, was in question. Now, this analysis and a dime will not get you a cup of coffee in the 70s, but please allow me to ask you to comment on this. It, it, an amateur analyst will be tempted to conclude that if your mother reached from the grave to slap you by leaving you out of the will, you have returned the indignity with this public disclosure of her indiscretion. There have been people who have said that, yes, and uh, I, I think it's no secret that the book is very controversial, that I have become a very controversial person. My feeling is, and the reaction has been, that when people have read the book, when they've read the whole book, when the book is able to stand for itself, they haven't asked the question. And uh, that's what I hope for, that the book will touch people in such a way that they will have a better understanding about their own lives. We were public people and under public scrutiny, but there are millions of people who live with what I lived with, and uh, nobody seems to be interested in their story. Mm -hmm. You also say that uh, your mother's, that we are all of us reflections of the mirror offered to us by our parents or by those who t to whom we become attached as children and that that reflection is often distorted. Yes, particularly I think uh, I, I've spoken to a number of people who work in the field of child abuse who are experts, I'm not, but uh, they, they say that particular well, children are so malleable, they want so much to please, they want so much for their parents to love them. And particularly the abused child who gets such a distorted image of themselves. In other words, if mommy and daddy beat me and I don't know what I've done wrong, uh, I, I must be some, uh, there must be something bad about yes. me, there must be something intrinsically wrong with me. Yeah. And so the child becomes very guilty and, and that becomes like a vicious cycle. The harder they try, the less they succeed. And so particularly, I think, in the, in the field of child abuse, it's important to understand that the child keeps working harder for that parent's love and gets less and less so that they grow up into adulthood having this image of themselves as a mirror of what they see from their parents that's very distorted, very distorted. How are you doing? You look happy. You have a, you have a happy marriage. And yes, I do. I'm, I'm very fortunate. I'm very lucky. How long did it take you to get on your feet from what had to be a... I mean, you had to feel like... You had to feel awful by the time you were 18 years old going out into the world. Much younger than that. There were, there were times when I was around 15, 16, when I didn't think I had the will to live anymore. I honestly thought I was going to die. When did, how old were you when your mother last slapped you in the face? Oh, I guess I was about probably 15, 16 years old. <clears throat> um, I, was, I was rather uh, surprised that there was not a more vigorous attempt in the book to explain your mother's behavior through her own loveless childhood. It's, uh, it's touched on in the book. I have to explain also that my mother wouldn't talk about her past. She wouldn't tell us what had happened to her. So that the little information I had, I had to put to uh, together like pieces in a puzzle. And the stories changed from time to time so that I put everything in the book that she told me, everything that I knew about. But is it, is it, is it possible that your mother behaved this way I don't, I, I, know this is, I don't mean to say we're all robots, but I wonder if you had been raised the way your mother had been raised. She lost her parents early, her father deserted her. I mean, she had a father who just took off, didn't come home. Then another man entered her mother's life, and she became attached to him, and he bailed out. You know what you're saying? I did have that same life. Very similar. But, Very similar. okay, well, my question is, if you had been raised as your mother had been raised, do you think you probably would have knocked your kids around too? I pray to God I wouldn't, but I think that you have to make some conscious choices.